before I ask Amber about her experience, because again, uh, I love that part of the story. Um, a lot of people that I, I speak to about psychedelics and I've done ayahuasca and mushrooms and other things, but it's, you know, these are plants that come from nature. And yes, the ibogaine is actually synthesized and, and you did it in a clinical setting with the right kind of therapist and doctor to administer and make sure that you, uh, you know, prepared and integrated after, which is so important for a healing journey, you know, setting intentions, like you said. Um, but was there, what I find is these plant medicines that indigenous cultures have been using in the proper setting with the proper guidance of a shaman or a medicine person or whatever, um, they are portals to, you know, kind of reconnecting to not only ourselves, but the world around us, each other and nature. It's like a, a powerful dose of nature and a reconnection to source. Did you, how, like, were you conscious of this connection that you felt? It was unbelievable, Kelly. Um, there's an experience I had that I watched a, um, I watched the nuclear bomb go off. And I mean this, like I watched the mushroom cloud in the distance, you know, like, why was I seeing that? And I remember just saying, holy shit, we did this. Like man did this. Like we, we did this to ourselves." Um, it was wild because I, I don't know why I was having that vision and I don't know why I was having those thoughts, but that was the first thought I had. I'm like, Oh, we, we developed that thing that just, you know, went boom. Um, and, and granted, um, what I did as a seal, I will never, um, like I, I would do it again. Like I, I loved that. Like I'm still me. Like I loved being, a, you know, a special operations soldier. I loved the individuals I worked with. I loved going overseas and, you know, protecting America against, you know, future attacks and, and taking terrorists off the street. Like I love that part and I'll never, but, but I also now see another part. Right. And like I said, you know, seeing the nuclear bomb go off in my experience was just wild. And the first thing I thought, I was like, man, and I said, man created that, like we did that, you know? And so you do have this insane connection with um, individuals and nature. I don't know how to explain it. It's just one of those things that um, you feel, right? And is it because we're, we're really not solid individuals? We're made up of, you know, molecules and cells and everything else is too. And so I don't know, like that's, you know, that's, that's way above here. You know, you could talk to, you know, people like, Alan Watts and individuals like that who, who are not around anymore, who probably are, um, know a little bit more about that than I do. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's a beautiful, it's a beautiful shift in perception. You know, yeah. you, you love the elements of being on a team and competing and pushing yourselves and solving problems and protecting the vulnerable. Um, but you had this awareness, like we're full circle. We're all humanity. You know? Yeah. Well, Kelly, I mean, we, you know, for years, um, like I said, I'll, I'll still be a warrior in, 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 in my own right. Um, and Amber knows that. And, you know, warriors for years though, when they defended their nation, city, town, whatever it was, they healed in between or after. So they fought and they came back and they healed, right? And they, they, they got better and they, they, they worked together as a community and, and, you know, they built and they, you know, they, they, it's a creative element grew food and they, yeah. And they just, they did things together, you know, and then, you know, and then the bad people come along and then they have to go back to war and defend, you know, their, their homeland again. And then they go back and heal. And I think that's where we, I think we got it wrong for a number of years is that um, we're just, we're just going too hard, you know, and, and um, some of us burn out early. And, you know, I always say, I envy the ones that have done 20 and 30 years and have done three or four times more deployments than I have, you know, I wish, you know, I wish I can, uh, I could have kept, kept up with them, but you know, I, I broke down. <laughs> but now you're in a healing phase and you and are I'm, bringing, bringing healing and this experience through your, your organization vets, you're bringing this healing phase that is missing in so many veterans lives. Um, because we've been in this constant state of war for the last 20 years. And, you know, obviously even before that Vietnam, there was so many unresolved, uh, there was, there was no healing. There's no, there's no completion to the cycle. So it's just complete burnout and destruction of, of these people that we're fighting for 
our freedoms, you know? So you're yeah. bringing this awareness and element that is missing uh, to protect the people that are protecting us. And it's so beautiful. We did, we did fail our Vietnam vets and I feel terrible about that. And we are um, just our organization, you know, we are, there are veterans that are reaching out from Vietnam saying, hey, you know, we didn't get anything, you know? So we are helping, the, the problem is, um, most of those individuals are like in their mid, mid seventies. And so it's, it's, it's very difficult. Um, you know, we, they have to be really screened prior to, uh, you know, prior to any plant medicine journeys, but, you know, we did fail, I think as a country in taking care of those individuals, I think we've done a really good job. I think we've flipped that 180 and, and, you know, uh, nonprofits like ours, and there's hundreds out there that are doing amazing work, make sure that we don't do that again. So, yeah, amazing. Yeah. So back to Amber, uh, when I first interviewed you, you described the first moment you made contact after um, Marcus emerged from his journey. Um, can you describe that for us? Absolutely. Um, this time, four years ago, I was truly, I, I was just thinking, you know, please, please hold on. I was begging him to please hold on. And he went for treatment on Veterans Day of 2017. So we're approaching the four year anniversary. And when you put all your cards on the table like that, and you get to the day where you, you know, I dropped him off at the airport and I thought like, this is it. If this doesn't work, then I don't know where we go from here. And so seeing him for the first time was really, um, gut wrenching. I was just, I was so nervous uh, because I, I thought if it doesn't work and it's, he's no better, I'm going to be absolutely heartbroken. And um, I was very nervous to see him. He came down the hall. I could hear his footsteps. And when he came around the corner, it was really like being reunited with him for the first time ever. Uh, the first time that I met him, his whole demeanor was different. His um, personality was back his heaviness was lifted. He doesn't even know this, but um, the, our friends uh, had intercepted him from the airport, taken him to the clinic. And uh, the, 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 the wife called me and <laughs> said, um, she said, Marcus's energy is so bad. I can't be in the same room with him. I don't know how you live with him. And all of that was gone in the next day. It was just, he was completely back to normal. And of course, like, you know, there have been bad days since. Some of his worst days have come since. Uh, our organization was born out of, you know, the, the want to pay this forward. And over the last four years, we've learned that, even and through our own experience as well, we've learned that it's not going to fix your problems. It's going to give you the opportunity to create the space to do the hard work. And um, the tough days that have come since have served a purpose in allowing Marcus to utilize new tools in getting himself out of a, a really dark place. So um, we've worked together as a couple. We've both worked individually. We're still working. It's like, you know, ups and downs, but generally trending upward. And um, our life is completely different today. Yeah, those down days are um, really short lived now. And, and like Amber said, you know, we have our daily practices and routines that, you know, we are unfortunately or fortunately going to have to do for the rest of our, our lives. Um, you know, meditation is a huge part of my life now. Um, it's the first thing I do in the morning for, you know, 30 to 40 minutes. And I try to do it for, you know, 15 to 20 in the afternoon. But it's for me, it just, wow, talking about like just regulating everything, it, it's, 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 I call it saving my life now because it's just it's so addicting and it's, it feels so good. <laughs> by the way, by the way, you have like physical brain injury, which hopefully is healing and regenerating as we know brains can now um, with all the work you've done. But like I say, meditation is saving me on a daily basis and I haven't had trauma. Yeah. Um, thank God. Uh, you know, and I, you know, you're human and you just happen to have this like rich history of badassery so you're maybe <laughs> your maybe your swings are slightly more extreme than mine but i have really bad days where i lose my shit and yeah. i have to come back to my tools so you're human and it is a process but i think we're all healing uh relative to our own circumstances every day and and we have to have those tools to save save ourselves every day you know yes, yes. um so uh 
I'm going to get into vets in a second because this is this is the you know again you are going through you went through the fire and and you came back and now you're you're a healer basically you're helping others heal through your experience and um, what other I know you guys help to offer grants and and support for different psychedelics. There's, I think five or six of them. What, what all have you tried and and what kind of has been your reader's digest uh, or two minute kind of experience with them? Uh, in terms of medicines? In terms of plant medicine. Yeah. Or yeah. I've, um, you know, I microdose regularly. I think it's, again, it's a, it's a game changer, you know, and I, I it's just puts you in a, it puts you in the right place. It, it helps you be creative. It, it, helps you focus, um, keeps your mood light. Um, you know, I've done, um, some ketamine therapies on some of the down days that Amber were talking about, you know, so I went to actual, you know, uh, vetted ketamine clinics here in the U S, um, and went through their protocol. I think ketamine for suicidal ideation, you know, for treatment resistant depression is, I don't think there's anything better or quicker. Um, I have done, uh, psilocybin, you know, mushroom experience. Um, I have not done ayahuasca experience. Um, I am very interested because, you know, I hear so much good that comes from it and so much growth and, and learning. And that's what these are. Every, every time I, you know, go into these journeys for me, it's growth education. How do I get better? You know, um, how do we become more aware, more mindful? Um, what else? 5-MeO-DMT. We did, 5-MeO-DMT, thank you. So the, the, um, the protocol that many of the individuals are, are doing is an Ibogaine uh, treatment followed by roughly 48 hours later, a 5-MeO experience. And 5-MeO, if you know, comes from, they call it the toad, um, what is it, 5-methox, methoxy, methotryptamine. <laughs> <laughs> I know it. Um, anyway, it's, it's a, one of the most powerful psychedelics on the planet. It gets you from zero to a hundred and immediately, um, which could be a little scary, but it, it, it's very nice after I began, which has been really tough and rough and mean and dark. Um, five AMO kind of brings you to the light and, and it really just kind of opens your heart. And, um, so it's a nice, what they call it kind of a cherry on top. Um, mm-hmm. and also some people actually, have similar experiences on 5-MeO that they had on Ibogaine. So some of them are talking to their dead buddies, you know, that they served mm. with overseas. So, you know, some people can go that, that way on 5-MeO, but for most people, it's a very enlightening, light um, experience uh, yeah. itself, so. DMT, right, it's 5-MeO DMT, is that what it is? DMT is, is, is a separate, it's a separate molecule. 5-MeO okay. is a different molecule. It's, okay. it's I, I kind of call it a step up because it definitely is a different journey. I think DMT is a little bit more like visual and colorful. 5-MeO is not. It's very white, white light, and you're, you're almost separated. It's pure ego death. Um, oh. You know, some people just like see themselves just kind of like melting into the earth and then just being in this like wonderment, you know, around them. So Beautiful. Thank you for listening to The Heal Podcast. Be sure to tune in for more empowering wisdom and inspiring healing stories. Oh, and make sure you hit the follow button on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss that one episode that holds the answer you've been searching for. And if you feel inspired, we would love you to rate and review us so that we have the opportunity to reach more people. And of course, you can follow us on Instagram for some behind the scenes fun and more inspiration at at Heal Documentary and at Kelly Gore. Thank you so much and be well.